I know I've said it before, but I wish I could use your CBD products in Singapore, but I oh, still can't. I know. <laughs> oh, I know. You tell me if you ever figure out a way for me to sneak it to you and I'll get it to you. Oh, uh, yeah. I mean, I, me. it kills me that I can't get it to you. I tell, I tell everyone I know who is willing to listen about the, the magic of CBD. And I always throw them your way. I say, just check out her website, check out her stuff. If you're based in the US, you should really definitely check out her stuff. You know, Thank you. I really appreciate that. And you've been doing, I mean, like, wow. Um, Cause you're like an entrepreneur business lady and you've been really keeping very busy. So what have you been up to lately? Uh, I'm, I have, I have an issue. The other day I was trying to tell somebody, um, cause I have my two groom shops still, you know, my, their holistic grooming. And, and then I have a little bit of retail where I sell my favorite foods and supplements. And, um, during the pandemic, and now we have a staff shortage. Nobody wants to work. It's actually worse than the pandemic was. Oh my so goodness. I was having to go in every single day to one of the shops because someone called out sick or, you know, and they were so short staffed. It's been nuts. And there was just a point where I was like, I turned to my manager and I go, I can't do this anymore. And then I went, I have four businesses. I don't even know how that happened, but I have a problem. <laughs> Oh. You, know what, you know, what happens is like when Nina, my Doberman, you know, the, my, do I lost my Doberman, yeah. lost my Doberman but yeah. you know, when I went down the medicinal mushroom, you know, whole researching all the mushrooms, which ones would be best, which ones could I source in the United States? Um, I couldn't find anybody making a tincture. I couldn't find anybody in the United States making a tincture that had all of the, you know, cancer fighting, the ones that have been proven, you know, anti-cancer, anti-tumor, you know, helps the, supports the immune system, does all those things. I couldn't find a tincture. I could find freeze-dried powders from China, real mushrooms, which is, you know, a great product. But when I put six or seven different mushrooms and powders in the food, I've now created mud. So it's like, all right, let me go find, some. they didn't exist. So I ended up creating a mushroom company for dogs. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand it. I don't, I'm like literally walking around the meeting with the holistic vets and I'm like, why aren't you guys doing this? And they're like, they don't even think it's, how do you do it? What's possible? I'm like, I didn't know either. I figured it out. I just couldn't believe that this was not available in the marketplace that I couldn't find a mushroom tincture. I mean, it's hard to find one for humans that is done right, much less one for dogs. So I just found the best person who makes the best products for humans. And then I got with him and taught him how to make one for dogs. <laughs> You know, you know but, at, at the very heart of you, and I'm like, I don't even have, I didn't even have the labels made yet. <laughs> <laughs> no, you, you are an entrepreneur at heart. At the end of the day, you're a problem yep. solver. So when there is a problem and no one, and there's no one that can solve it, your brain starts to go c -c 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 because like, well, if no one's effing doing it, I'm going to do it because I need it. <laughs> right. Exactly. <laughs> Which then makes a great product because you made it for what your dog was suffering from. And then you realize, mm. oh, there's all of these people whose dogs are suffering from this, you know, Hey, here you go. It's great. But I think it's also cool that, um, how many vets that, that I was just like, here's my mushroom tinctures, even though I'm not ready to wholesale them or anything, but if you want to try them and maybe in six months, I'll be ready with, for everything. My mm -hmm. mushrooms are more expensive than my hemp is holy crap really so when i'm like um it's 36 dollars a bottle for my mushrooms wholesale so you can either go ahead and go there or you can wait till i can bulk get all of the organic ingredient ingredients because i can't get them yet um mm. and they're also grown in the wild on the natural substrate that they're supposed to so like farmers literally put the log out in the woods in Oregon and then wait till they're certain and harvest them sustainably. So 
everything. It's kind of like hemp 10 years ago, you know, or mm. cannabis 10 years ago. So mm. it's a lot easier to find a hemp farmer than it is to find. And, and mushrooms, they need to grow on whatever they're supposed to be decomposing, you know? Right. So like shock, chaga, for instance, if it's not grown on the birch, it's not going to have the medicinal properties that it's supposed to. Wow. So it's that important. So keeping it as natural and how it's supposed to be in nature, what it's called wild crafted that basically however it was supposed to be in the wild is how we want to be able to just chop it and extract it, extract the components and put it into a, a tincture. How long did it take for you to, from concept of micro dog to where you are now? Two years. Two years. Wow. I, I find two years is usually the magic. That's how long it took me with the hemp products too, with the full spectrum hemp products. And then what was beautiful about that is that it wasn't, I created them in 2016. So I had mm. two years to try all of them on every animal at my rescue farm, any animal I saw suffering that came into my shop. So I literally got to do my own little trials, you know, and yeah. all I saw was dogs completely turning around health wise, nobody having bad reactions. Nobody ever came to me and was like, it didn't do anything. If they mm. did, it was because they were doing drops instead of full dropper fulls kind of thing. So, wow. you know, by 2018, when I'm releasing the product, I'm like, oh no, it works. I've seen it repeatedly. This is before all the research was out, of course. So I'm like, oh no, I've seen it work for this, 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 this. This is how I came up with what ailments they helped is because mm. of what I got to witness everyone do. That's literally how I created my tinctures. It's like, okay, dogs are itchy. They have arthritis. They have cancer. They have seizures. And then just, you know, breaking it out on which ones, which plants work best for that, which medicinal plants, which adaptogens work best for that disease or that ailment or whatever it is that the pet is suffering from. You know, I I love your drive and your enthusiasm, and hey. I just I love I love the way you are just so driven, you know, to to just go for it, even I'm though you. I'm passionate. I'm passionate I know. about it, and I know it works. So when I see dogs, and this is part of the reason that Josie and I are doing this event, mm. is you know how many times I've gotten on conversations with her, and she's be, she'd be like, I saw my second dog in one day that's on methadone and you know we do cons online consultations with um dr sarah urban where we are seeing these people come in where they're on five pain meds mm -hmm. and the dog's 14 and just mm -hmm. has arthritis what's happening so i just kept saying this doesn't make any make any sense to me like isn't there a hippocratic oath that you guys take and they're like uh-huh and it's do no harm. Mm. How do I help you heal without causing any harm? Well, guess what? Here in the United States, we have found that that is no longer in existence. What has now been perpetuated is from the pharmaceutical companies and the hospitals is a standard of care. And that standard of care is here's the disease and here's what we say you should do for that disease instead of here's the patient what can we help? How can we help that patient holistically without doing any harm? So it, I think it'll be, it's the huge difference between conventional and integrative slash, you know, holistic is treating the patient or treating the disease. Yeah. And every patient's different. Just like, you know, if, when you try hemp, it's amazing how you'll see how different, if you have a deficiency in your endocannabinoid system, that's how you going that's how we would be able to tell how much medicine you need but we don't know how to gauge that so all you can do is go okay nine milligrams got rid of the problem or you know whatever or 10 or 12 or 100 you never know how much it's going to be because every animal is an individual just like humans are oh, i wish these are the these are the moments where I wish I was living or with you physically in the same city and I could attend your your event, you know, like like physically. It's online, so <laughs> it's yeah. online. I know how and that that is that is 
the next best thing to being physically there. So tell me more about your event and who do you have lined up? You bet. So uh, Josie and I are put it together and we invited, uh, it's funny because I put, you know, I have a list of my favorite holistic veterinarians and I put the list of my, the ones that I wanted to speak. And I was like, in case anybody's out of town or can't do it. I also wasn't sure if everybody was going to be on for what I wanted to talk about, you know, because there is a problem. There is an over prescribing and overuse of drugs on our animals. That is an epidemic, just like it is in humans. So in the United States, there's, uh, do you know what the third leading cause of death is for humans and for our pets? No. So it's cancer and heart disease. I'm sorry. It's heart disease and cancer for humans. And for pets, it is the other way around cancer and heart disease. And the third leading cause is medical error. Ouch. How, how, how does that happen? Cause that's because we have a system here of our veterinarians and doctors aren't taught anything about diet and nutrition. Mm -hmm. So they depend on the um, pharmaceutical companies for, they're not taught about the endocannabinoid system. So that system is the major system that controls all of the other systems. So imagine the ailments and diseases that they have no idea what they are. So they just write a prescription drug. Right. So that's where we started on this event. Where Josie and I have ended is we can't even believe what we're finding when we go down a rabbit hole. This literally could be like a Netflix series, the stuff we're finding. Because wow. she had to go, okay, I'm just going to concentrate on these three drugs. Because when she started going down the rabbit hole, she found gabapentin, for instance, which she has been reporting on for like the past two or three years, where she's seeing a trend because she's been practicing like a lot of the others for over 20 years. So they've watched where these drugs have fell out of favor in the human market and have now been um, approved by the FDA for pain in animals. When it was never even a pain med in the first place for humans, and it didn't work for that. So it's like the pharmaceutical companies go, well, we gotta make money off of it somehow. Let's go over where the less regulated you know, industry and go over into the pet industry and release it for this. And guess what? It doesn't work. So they give another one and another one, or it causes a problem and they give another one. or and animals, they've discovered there's five pain pathways. So pharmaceutical drugs make a targeted drug to deal with just this pain pathway. So then they give each drug for each of the pathway at the same time. So five drugs is usually what we're finding these poor senior geriatric animals and pain. And guess what in humans? It's 15 drugs that we're finding these people on. I've had numerous people go, yeah, they have my, my parent on, you know, who's in their eighties on 15 different drugs. I'm like, no, really, I want you to count them and tell me how many and tell me what they are. It's like a slow kill. Mm. And in the meantime, they're selling the heck out of that pharmaceutical company. You're coming in and paying for your blood test because they have to make sure that they're not killing the dog too fast. So it's amazing going down the research, what we've already found and how we're already like, oh my God, we only have this much time in the day. So we're, we're basically going to introduce the problem to everybody, show what we have found so far that this is a horrible trend that's happening in the, in the pet industry. And then we have, you know, what ex has existed for thousands and thousands of years. So we're getting back to where we have Dr. Ava Frick um, explaining what functional medicine is, treating the patient and not the disease, mm. um, what holistic, holistic and integrative means, um, looking at the whole animal, looking at all of these amazing types of medicine that have, list, you know, have existed for thousands and thousands of years. Um, and then we have everybody coming on to talk about those different medicines. So we've got Dr. Sarah Urban, talking about high chiropractic and acupuncture works for pain. Um, we have PJ Broadfoot talking about everything from full spectrum hemp extract for pain, green, green lipped muscles, um, uh, deer antler velvet, 
you know, these things that we don't even hear about and how there's all, it's out there. The re all of the research out there, it's just so hard for you guys to find as pet parents. So we're kind of bringing that to light. Um, we've got Dr. Ruth Roberts talking all about traditional Chinese medicine. We have Dr. Sodi talking about Ayurvedic medicine. So basically just reintroducing that these things in, are in existence, have been in existence, have been proven to work. And then of course I'm talking about cannabis and medicinal mushrooms and adaptogens because to me, you know, the, the, the top three things I did for Nina um, to get her to 26 months with the most painful, awful cancer is diet, ketogenic diet, medicinal mushrooms, and cannabis. Wow. So to me, those three things were the most important thing. I did chiropractic. I did acupuncture. Once in a while, we added herbs for certain things if things kind of got off or whatever. But those were the three main components. I did not have to do chemotherapy, radiation, and did not amputate her leg. And the fact that they're still taught that, the first thing both holistic and conventional vets will do is amputate that leg. Even though the holistics will tell you when you amputate that leg, what that does to the immune system, the anesthesia, it throws their body off and it yeah. gives the cancer the opportunity to spread everywhere. You know, I wish well, it's probably too late now, but I do wish like this event that you're doing was like years earlier when I was looking for answers for a lot of questions because I do rescue work as well. You know, not on the scale that you do, but I was trying to like figure out a lot of things and what are the options. And I love how you're bringing all these great minds together who have great hearts to want to serve the community, to share this knowledge, you know, it's fantastic. It's fantastic. I agree. I agree. I, I feel like we have to kind of battle the pharmaceutical industries and that message um, that's being put out there to everybody. I feel like we have to be a voice to let people know that no, 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 this is still the cool thing. <laughs> this still works. I know. This Still is the best. Um, at, you know, of course, Josie will say there's a place for pharmaceuticals. Um, I think there, I'm sure there is. I just, you know, absolutely. A steroid will, is supposed to so stop the problem, stop the inflammation, stop the swelling <clears throat> so that you can figure out what's wrong. But that's not how veterinarians and doctors are using them. Antibiotics, same thing. They're using them for very long periods of time. I have to drink water. Hold on. <laughs> yeah. No, I, I agree because every time someone I know in Singapore has, you know, the animal has an issue, you know, from loose stools to, you know, itchy paws. Um, when I asked them, so what did, what did the vet diagnose and prescribe? They would just say, oh, we were given antibiotics and all steroids at the same time, you know. I have a quote from the <laughs> CDC that says the overprescribing of antibiotics is going to be our biggest health concern. We have MRSA, we have these uh, uh, bacteria that do not, don't even respond to it anymore. So yeah. that the overuse of that is just incredible, not, not to mention what it does to the gut microbiome, which is where your immune system lives. I know. So, uh, it's it's just it's just really scary because I can see it happening here in I was Singapore. Say, what do you see there? You know, it's exactly okay. the same thing. Yeah, you know, it's like an over reliance on on these drugs, and you know, me looking on, I'm like, oh, no, stop, you know. But the thing is, because I'm not to my friends, you know, I'm just a pet parent. What do I know? Thanks. Yeah. What do I know? I'm not a vet. I don't have the word DVM. You know, I didn't go to vet school. You know, so they and because we live in Asia, where the Asian culture still is very much respectful of professionals. So they say like, well, she's a doctor. She went to school, so she knows best. And I keep telling them, well, honestly, not all of them really learned a lot of stuff. And when you talk about nutrition. They barely scrape the surface on it. It's it's really the the alphabet diet, as I call it. You know, the yep. prescription diet. And I said, and those diets are really sponsored by those companies. So 
what nutritional background do they have you know so it's it's like something i feel that you know even for me here in singapore like you know when i talk to pet parents and when they come to me and they, they say oh you know my dog or my cat has his problems and i'm like what are you feeding what are you giving what supplements are you have helping to boost the immune system but usually it's because it's oh i'm i'm on this medication and this is the prescription and i'm like you know and it's so hard to break that that mindset because like i said i'm just a pet parent what do i know right. and so the doctor's writing the prescription so you're literally this crazy person telling them not to do what their doctor told them to do i know but i am <laughs> yeah so i <laughs> love what to me. i love what you're doing with this do no harm event because this is something that you know i i'm sharing with my friends here and I'm like look Good. just just sign up go yeah. online and like and guess what there are holistic integrative vets there on the panel who are going to discuss these things that to be honest mainstream doesn't want you to know they don't want to talk about it and it's so like under the radar it's so almost like, like taboo. i feel like i feel like we got a lot we have a lot of um lives and even events that tell us about these wonderful um you know modalities that exist you know whether it's ayurvedic or traditional chinese but they don't tell us why we should be looking at those and be afraid of what's being prescribed instead so i feel like that that needed to be said and the fact that josie's like like literally we're like look if we disappear it's because big pharma came and got us you know to shut us up but um i think it's important for people to know because there is so much trust put in that doctor or in that veterinarian that does not know better and if they are not one that has believes in that Hippocratic oath of not doing any harm, because you can not do any harm. That's literally what you're supposed to do. You're literally supposed to help the body heal itself. And that these meds are to help, you know, stop whatever it is, figure out what the problem is, and then move forward, not make them be on these drugs for the rest of their lives. See, in the United States, I don't know if you know this, that it's only legal in the United States and like one other country that I can't remember now for pharmaceutical companies to advertise directly to the consumer. And not only do they do it, they do it for pet meds like you wouldn't believe now. So if you watch like regular cable television here in the United States, literally every commercial break, there's a pharmaceutical drug um, being you know pushed towards us. And then daytime television, oh my gosh, a pet one, one after wow. another. It's huge. And of course the ph big pharmaceutical companies here, all here have an animal arm. So mm. it's very convenient to take a drug that didn't work in the human and then reclassify it and get it pushed through the FDA as something with no proof at all, none. So some of the biggest players here, the biggest player of course is Pfizer and their animal arm is called Zotus. Do you wanna know how much they made last year in revenues? Tell me. Seven point eight billion with a B dollars. Oh my gosh. Merck five point nine billion dollars. <sighs> All of them are like four billion and higher. And then, and that was just the top five that I happened to look at. Wow. So it's profits over patients for sure. It's big money. It's awful. It pissed me off. So I'm glad these doctors are joining me and helping me get this messaging out because pet parents still know best, especially mm -hmm. ones like us. Yeah. And we know what's best. And, you know, it's really sneaky. You, you go even to the vet office and you need to look at your bill and yeah. go, why am I being charged for these painkillers? I don't want these. I'm not going to give it to them. Please take them off my bill and out of my bag. Wow. You know, stories from, you know, uh, doctors prescribing whatever they paid for, whatever they have in their medicine cabinet that's about to expire. Um, those types of things where it's like, you know what, why don't we keep the doctor and the pharmacy completely separate from each other? You know, mm. so that if my dog has this, I, I get to go say, these are my choices and this is what I'm going to go for. But you're not even offered the holistic Thing. you're just mm. offered a pill every time it's very brave of you to do this 
honestly just honestly off. <laughs> because really it's like this is something that you know is whispered a lot and you know like like behind behind closed doors between good friends is talked about but right. yet in public not much is said right not much is said but we're laughing you know not laughing but we see that when we put an ad up for the event and we get, you know, four or five people who are just, you know, you're, you're making a human problem become a pet problem. And I'm like, no, sweetheart. I'm not just like, they think we're just trying to sell something or, you know, cause drama. I don't know. And we're like, no, 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 no. this really is a problem. Like you literally can pipe in the FDA even has a warning out for pets here um, wow. saying that there's a huge problem with, um, people either giving their dogs human medicines or dogs being prescribed a human medicine when it should be the dog version of it um, to the pharmacist just gets it wrong. You know, it's just crazy. It's crazy. Um, so I would never put, I don't care who it is. I would research, look, make sure everything was right. And uh, before I put anything into my dog. And then I always look for the holistic version because I don't think people know that most pharmaceuticals are derived from whatever it is in nature that did it. I know. Right now, there's two drugs, a CBD, uh, a synthetic version of CBD and a synthetic version of THC that are FDA approved drugs, you know, for cancer and seizures on the market. When a full uh, spectrum with all of the compounds together is what really works and what's been proven. So even kids with seizures can get something that's of the synthetic, which they don't want because it's the full spectrum that works better. I hear you. And you know what's you know what is interesting in Singapore? They they don't allow natural C B D here because it's illegal, it's marijuana, it's you know, whatever. But the Singapore government is actually supporting with the big farmers that's investing in Singapore in the research industry for synthetic cannabis, right? How that works? <sighs> you know. Oh, like right now. So it like I feel like um, the rest of the world fall. It tries to follow what the United States does. Yes. And we're freaking messed up. It's all based on profits over patience. Um, so it's a terrible example, but that's exactly what goes on. All the vet schools are supported by big pharma and the, you walk in and you see their posters for their food and their drugs all over the walls of the, of the yeah. campuses. So they're controlling the message. It's even making me think that Josie brought this up. She's like, what's the point of me going to school, getting this veterinary license when someone can call themselves a canine herbalist and do the same thing I'm doing and they don't have the student loan that they have to pay back and they don't have to do anything. It's literally, you need the license to prescribe drugs. Mm. What mm. if you don't want to prescribe drugs? Do I still need that bullshit license? <laughs> like there's a, the big, the big uh, gossip at the age VMA was, and I got to find this girl, I'm going to look her up. But some really rich girl decided she wants to become a veterinarian. And so she goes to vet school and she's so excited to learn about diet and nutrition. And wait a minute, they don't even talk about that. So she's pissed, left, and is building her own school. Wow. So let's see what happens. But um, I'd be like, lock me up. Take away. I know veterinarians who are practicing without a license because they don't ever use those prescription drugs they're chiropractors they're acupuncturists they're herbalists they're homeopaths they're never going to write a prescription drug because pj broadfoot hasn't a uh, dr pj broadfoot hasn't written a prescription drug in over 30 years she goes i don't even have a prescription pad and i'm like yes we need more of you yeah she's awesome like, i'm actually about drugs and not about what a, a animal needs yeah no it's it's that's what you know it it really i think conventional education you know the control you know even like 
uh, let's say human universities and you know the vet schools you know the, that so-called emphasis on the traditional route where you have to have a degree you got to be professional to qualify and do yada 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 i just feel that in it in today's world it doesn't work that way anymore in fact if human experience what we know organically naturally you know it's still gold so-called traditional mother folk medicine and all that the woo-woo stuff as people like to call it right but there's still a lot of truth in it when you just take away all that you know the flu flu stuff you know all the all the myths and all the all the bullshit that people like to to smear it with but if you actually look at the history you know how medicine actually came about it's all organic it's all from the ground it's all yeah. natural you know and that is the most gentle way for the body to absorb anything whole foods you know and and it's really sad that modern day education, the conventional way, has perverted all that knowledge and has turned the fact that you must have this degree to do this or you can't you can't play within our rules, you know, you can't play in our sandbox, you know. Right. And it's it's turning out a lot of the younger vets that I see in Singapore, very sadly. I'm very scared to go to them. I don't even want to go, like my the vet clinic that I go to. They have like four vets, two seniors, two juniors. I always go to for the senior ones, just because they have honestly more experience. Right. Whereas the younger ones, I mean, like I've been told before by another vet, like yeah, the younger vets nowadays, if you take away the technology, they can't calculate anything. <laughs> Medication, everything, they rely very heavily on the computer yep you know they don't know how to palpitate and do a physical examination of the animal anymore or make an assessment on their own they literally are here's the disease and this is the protocol you follow no matter what kind yeah of thing. i know it's nuts yeah it takes, and, and it doesn't make any sense if it if it brings you any hope we went to our first um we exhibited at our first conventional vet conference we were scared to death and we were invited because Dr. Zach got invited to speak about the endocannabinoid system, how cannabis medicine works. So we were shocked and excited. And it was a mix between young vets who understand they know that the endocannabinoid system exists because they have already used the medicine for themselves or understand it. And, and or those that are like, uh, how much can I make if I bring this into my practice? Mm. You know, so a little of both. Um, and then a, a very popular vet here um, in the United States, Dr. Christman, said that they are speaking about it in vet schools and that some schools are actually starting to teach about the endocannabinoid system. So we are excited that that's even being mentioned uh, or even being talked about and that we're being invited without, you know, them throwing stones at us when we show up, um, and, you know, because there's a lot of them who do get into it because they love animals and then do realize what they're doing doesn't work and isn't helping and make that shift so more and more of those are going to do it do it us talking about it and putting on events like that are going to find those people who know that this is a problem and that it exists so hopefully we can build that up and just there's going to be times you know where the person who says on facebook you know you're just making this up this isn't really a problem and that person probably has a young dog that they haven't lost yet. And when they do lose that dog and they have no idea and they spend thousands of thousands of dollars and the dog just suffered, they're going to hear me in the back of their head. Yeah. And they're going to, they're going to come back to this because that's what happens. You lose your first dog, you know, yeah. to, to everything that you were supposed to do and it didn't work. So I yeah. like to say I lost my first schnauzer at seven years old. I stopped counting at $15,000. I got an autopsy. The only thing they found was irritable bowel. And I killed her. I killed her because I gave her the flea and tick every month. I gave her the heartworm. I gave her the vaccinations every year. I fed her the kibble they told me to feed. 
I did it all because I literally remember thinking um, they're like, well, should we give him? Do you want this vaccination? This vaccination? I'm like, whatever to help protect him. I remember saying that. Give him whatever to, and they were like, went crazy, and I killed my dog. Trust putting that much trust and ignorance into a conventional vet. I now am, let's see, in two days, going to celebrate my second Schnauzer's 16th birthday. Wow. And he has not been vaccinated since his, you know, since I think he's two. He does not get any heart, uh, does not get heartworm treatment. He does not get flea and tick. Uh, he feeds a raw, well, not anymore because he's too old, so he gets a gently cooked, but has always been fed a, a biologically appropriate diet. Um, and so I kind of get to say I doubled, more than doubled um, the second time around. And I think a lot of people go through that. And then what happens? I find a lot of people now call me or reach out to me and go, I just got a puppy and I want to make sure I do it right this time. What do I do? <laughs> That's fantastic. So, I think yeah. honestly, it's, it's because of what you do in the education to just keep sharing your knowledge, you know, regardless of what people say or bitch or, you know, they, or the trolls and stuff, you know, but because you are so passionate about making sure pet parents have know their options right that's all i'm telling you you have choices i want you to know that you have choices and if you're feeling in your gut that something's wrong there's there's something else that'll make you feel better oh man i said you know it's i wish that you were holding this event years ago i know better late than ever exactly so when is when when is this event going to start it's September 22nd. Um, we're going to start it at 3 p.m. Um, people can sign up at uh, yournaturaldog.com slash events. And they sign up for an email and then they'll get an email telling them the agenda, where the link is to uh, sign up. It is a free event. There are two paid options if anybody wants to upgrade where they get some perks. Um, and but for anybody it's free and we're going to give you all of the information uh that you need to make a decision for yourself of what you think is best for your pet um and we're literally going to tell you instead of an antibiotic you could do this instead of a steroid you could do this instead of you know i looked at the research when i was dealing with nina um for my presentation and i'll present this of course but you know, I go, let me see what the research says, because oncology and animal health is a new thing. Mm. Um, and what's funny is that you think it's a new thing, meaning it's an opportunity for someone to make more money. But the most of the oncologists that I know, and there's very few in the industry, are wonderful people. So there's more good ones than bad ones, which is great. And they are using integrative therapies. But I can tell you exactly how I stopped Nina's um, cancer from spreading and how I kept her alive for 26 months because I went down that black hole and found it and and I'll be able to explain it to you. Um, And it's that same concept of that the vets are taught amputation, radiation, chemotherapy. If I look up that research and that's what's so funny about research, some of it's so such bullshit. But the, you know, let's say you just do chemotherapy, you get Uh, I'm sorry, you just do amputation, you get an extra 100 days, you do amputation and chemotherapy, you get 200 days, you do all three chemotherapy, radiation, and amputation, you get 300 days. I got 850 days with Nina, and I didn't do any of those things. I look at the research, and I want to say it started with like 72 dogs, those statistics, and I'm loosely saying the numbers, I don't have them exactly. Those statistics were on only the 12 dogs that survived that treatment. So they started with like 72 and only 12 did they get those extra days. (laughs) So it's like, (sighs) come on, that's not act. That's not a good assessment that chemo, radiation and amputation work. And I how think many I heard, how many times I heard that's this weekend saying, yeah, I remember when we removed that hemangiosarcoma mm. tumor, it then metastasized everywhere. How many times are we going to keep hearing that taking, mm. just going in and taking that tumor out is not the way it should not be the first thing that they do. 
I will be so interested in, in attending your talk because, I mean, for me, I haven't, well, my, my, my 10 year old dog, um, she's 10 this year, um, seems okay, you know, she's a, she's a rascal, but I'm hoping to, ex you know, make her lifespan to be happy, 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 happy until she's dead, you know, and, but I want that death to be, I want to try and push it as far into the future as I can, you know, and I'm trying my best to do it with very natural ways. She's chemical free. You know, okay. I stopped the heartworm, the, the, the front line, all that stuff um, quite a few years ago, you know. So it's like I'm just trying to do it naturally with whatever resources I have available in Singapore. And I'm really interested to know how you did it with Nina because I think your journey, your, your story with Nina is very powerful. Yeah, you know? I want everyone to know about Nina because it was – I got to prove that I didn't do a single conventional thing. And what's really funny is that um, I remember getting a bottle of gabapentin from the first vet. Because what I do is I go get her blood work x-rays done. And then I go to Josie or Sarah and go, what do I do? <laughs> you know, kind of thing. Um, so uh, I think that it is, and I think that's something anybody can do because you can get Josie on telehealth, you can get Sarah on a phone call and send them all their records. And so that you can get a holistic vet to help you and then, mm. you know, figure out how to get you what you need or substitutes for what you can't, you know, what you can't yeah. get. Yeah. But anybody, anybody listening or anybody attending the event, it's never too late. The best, you know, you could detox their body. Matter of fact, uh, Dr. Frick is going to really talk about how to detox. So, hey, you did do this by accident or you did need to put them under because of anesthesia, like Nina, eventually we had to put her under to amputate the legs. So we did a full detox and um, gave her a fecal transplant after to rebuild her microbiome and all of that to help her recover from, you know, have, going under. Cause it's so traumatic. Like every time, now that I know about anesthesia, mm -hmm. that's how they put your dogs down. They overdose them on the anesthesia. So yeah. you have to think about it every time you put your dog under you're taking years off their life at the end, of course. But, you know, how we just think, oh, once a year, I'm going to go put them under to do their teeth. No, don't do that. Or we're going to put them under to take off this lump on their arm. No, don't do that. You know what I'm saying? There's just a time and a place. And I think the reaction is to cut it out, you know, cut it, put them under and cut it out or get rid of it. And that's not always the best scenario. And to load them up on drugs and antibiotics. She didn't have to take a single pain pill. Mm. And thank God I never gave her the gabapentin now that I have Josie's information because <laughs> it doesn't even work on pain. Yeah. yeah it was yeah, for depression. Yeah. No, no, that was trazodone. Trazodone was an originally made for depression in humans and now it's a painkiller for animals. How did that happen? Well, all I can say is I think anyone who loves their animals should really, really, really make an effort to attend your event. And it's free. So really, there isn't any excuse. And for those who think they can't attend live, there is the paid version. So, you know, just go for it. I, I mean, like, honestly, I wish I had this information years ago, because it would have made my life so much easier, especially with the rescue work and the animals that we see. You know, now I know a little bit better, but the thing is, knowledge is never ending. There's, we're always learning and, you know, we're always learning something new. So even if you think you're a smart aleck now and you think you know everything, I challenge you to just pay attention to what these amazing people have to say and see for yourself, do you actually know what you're doing, you know, because I... It's true what's going on, do no harm. There is something really dirty going on with Big Pharma, the ethics. I just there think- There are no ethics. There are no ethics. You know, not, I just that think- doesn't play, That doesn't play in the bottom line. We're only interested in making uh, yeah. huge profits. Yeah, and it's, and it's scary because it's the FDA, 
you know, it's it's so called regulation people that that approve these things, you know, and I just find it very scary. And think that that if you get a drug or that the the doctor who's prescribing the drug that that has been FDA approved and that it's yep. safe, and that yep. it's been proven to be safe and effective, yep. and it's yep. not. There's yep. a whole category of drugs that are called unapproved drugs by the FDA, but that are legally that can be legally marketed. I'm like, Josie, what the hell is that? She's like, oh yeah, that's just the new, it's a new classification of drugs because the FDA doesn't even have the resources or the staff to look at pet drugs because they don't even have time to come yeah. up, you know, see what's going on in the human, even if the FDA was what we hoped it would be, which it's not, it's controlled by big pharma also. So, and we can prove all that. Who sits on what board? Who got that job right after they were on the FDA for, you know, a year and then suddenly are a CEO of this new drug at this, at, at, at Pfizer. Yeah. So it's constant. That's constantly happening. Yeah. Um, so I say question everything. Trust your gut. You know better. Something doesn't seem right before you put it or give it to your dog. If it's a product, whether your vet prescribed it, look it up first do your research and you have to do your research big time you can't just go to three websites because there's probably going to be three at the top that are controlled by the drug company that are going to tell you <laughs> yeah they're going to i agree i agree tell you why you better give your dog the drug they're also going to scare you from all the natural stuff yeah so it's incredible how they do that you i see that down and find that yeah. natural no i i hear you someone like you <laughs> I hear you because this is exactly what's happening here in Singapore, because everything, the whole world, very sadly, blindly follows the United States of America for everything. I, they should, you know, it, they should. It, you know it, 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 it irritates me sometimes because they blindly follow, you know, and, and they think, oh, it's FDA approved, so it's okay, it's good, you know. And I'm just like, no, you don't understand. There's a lot of things that that's there, but you can't see it. And unfortunately, the way Google does things as well nowadays, you know, the search engines, um, hey, how you paid it for your message to be seen. Yeah, you know. So, so the thing is, and remember, you're not allowed to advertise uh, hemp or CBD online. Yeah. yeah. So that's completely being restricted. From us. I know. We have to like figure out and go around the amount of times that we've been shut I down know. and blocked because we by accident said the word hemp. <laughs> I know. I, I know. I get I get stares at because when I talk to people locally and I said, you know, you know, hemp cannabis is actually medicinal. And they look at me like I'm kind of like, oh, you're one of those people, are you? You know, I said, well, yeah, I guess you're gonna call me in a name, but the thing is it's the truth, you know. There's, there's so much things that we don't know that unfortunately we're being, you know, the government is restricting our access to these things. So right. for me to be able to attend your event virtually, you know, is a gift. It's a Good. gift. And I, and I really, really hope that anyone out there, anywhere in the world, just dial in, sign up and go for it because you're going to be very much surprised shocked probably and then enlightened because they're going to give you answers to a lot of questions that you're going to be like oh my god now what they will provide the answers for you and give you options as angela said you're going to have choices you know if she could have done what she did for nina for two years oh my goodness what a gift what a yep. gift she's given four to six months to live and she lived 26 months wow. so and 500 more days over anything conventional could have done if it yeah. if it would have so yeah um and she enjoyed that time she yeah. was running around it wasn't until the last two weeks that i knew that it was not good and i wanted to confirm that it had actually spread finally after the thing but yeah, it wasn't until the two weeks did she know, she didn't know she had cancer. She held that leg up and ran after Chase Bunny, the videos of her chasing bunnies, you know, holding it up. So it is, um, that's the other thing about the treatments is that they call them palliative, but they're, they're killing their 
animal, they're poisoning their animal with the chemotherapy and the dog can't say, no, that's too much, or I don't feel good, or I need this. So we don't know, that's not palliative. Palliative is that they're still enjoying their life. They're not, they're pain-free, you know, and we're letting things happen naturally. So yeah, it's a lot of money and a lot of suffering that doesn't need to happen. And I'm gonna continue to get that message out because I love my animals and I feel like people are taking advantage of that love we have for them. Thank you well, for having me and letting me talk so openly. Um, I love what you do. And I knew, I was like, you saw me at the, the events next week. And I'm like, I have to get on with her. <laughs> I know. I'm just, thank you for thinking of me all the way here yes, in Circle. You're one of my favorite people. And I appreciate you so much. And I don't get to tell you that often enough. So I just wanted to say thank you. You were the one that I was like, I <laughs> well i look forward to attending your event because i think it's it's like it's it's fucking amazing and i just want to i want to learn so everyone i do encourage you to please 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 sign up for it you know it's not too late and just open your mind open your mind to the options and choices you have to help your animal live a healthier longer life thank you amen Wow, I'm so thankful and grateful that you took the time to listen to this podcast. It would mean the world to me if you could subscribe, download, rate, review, and share this with others whom you care about that may enjoy it as well. Thank you, and remember to be kind to yourself and others. Have a awesome day, everyone.